Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Myself, uh, Dr. Sumit Patil. I make videos upon English literature uh, and if you are new to my channel, uh, I will suggest you to uh, uh, subscribe to my channel so that you can watch my previous videos and upcoming videos. Uh, so today, I am going to talk about Age of Chaucer, which is the fourth part in a series of English literature. I have made videos upon which you, which you all can see here. Uh, right from the age of Anglo-Saxon, which was the first uh, video. Second video I made upon Anglo-Norman. Third video I made upon Middle English period or Middle English literature. Then this is the fourth uh, part and fourth video in the history of English literature, which is the age of Chaucer. Now, why this period or why this age, a, uh, 100 years that uh, starts from uh, 1300 and it ends in 1400, why this period is called as the age of Chaucer? Because the great poet, the great man was born in the era, in this age or in this uh, decade that is uh, uh, 1340, uh, the great uh, poet was born that is uh, none other than Geoffrey Chaucer who is also called as the national poet of uh, England as well as he is the father of English uh, literature, not only the father of English literature but he is the first person to uh, be buried, to, uh, he was buried in the uh, poet's corner wherein it, it is a legacy. Uh, after uh, the, uh, we can say after uh, uh, Geoffrey Chaucer was died, uh, uh, then uh, people started or uh, major writers, major poets was buried in the poet's corner. Now, coming to the uh, important points uh, which is there in the era of uh, this uh, age that is age of Chaucer, the first and the foremost point is when the when this era or when this age opens, this is the opening movement of English literature when uh, first and the foremost point is uh, that uh, during which king uh, we can say uh, uh, Geoffrey Chaucer was born, he was born under the reign of Edward the third and uh, this is the when when Geoffrey Chaucer was uh, living or when he was alive, he has seen three kings who came to the throne. First and the foremost is when he was uh, uh, when he was born uh, during that period of time, Edward the Third was uh, reigning. Second, King Richard uh, the Second, he was ruling in this period that is uh, during 1337 when Chaucer was writing uh, numerous things. And after that, when uh, when he was on the verge to die during 1400 it was the accession of henry the fourth in the year that is 1400 exactly when uh, uh, geoffrey chaucer died so this is the uh, social background or historical background and uh, during this period the three kings that is edward the third was there when he was born second uh, 1377 when uh, 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 king richard was uh, reigning or ruling and uh, now uh, why Geoffrey Chaucer is very famous? The first and the foremost thing is he uh, was very close to John of Gaunt and uh, because he was close to uh, John of Gaunt what has happened is he was sent on uh, diplomatic uh, missions and uh, uh, he, uh, because he was sent on diplomatic missions he met uh, greatest writer in the history of era uh, in the European literature which is uh, Francisco Petrarch and uh, not only Francisco Petrarch but he met Boccaccio as well as some other great writers of Renaissance. Then after this what has happened is when he uh, travelled a lot because uh, he was very fond of we can say literature, he not only travelled to Italy but he travelled to uh, France, uh, Germany, Spain, uh, Portugal and major part of Europe. And because he was traveling a lot, he learned uh, uh, so many things, not only poems, but prose. And uh, he wrote so many things, major poem or major, uh, we can say, the, uh, he wrote so many poems. That is, uh, uh, Parliament of Fowls, Troilus and Crusade. And uh, based upon, uh, we can say, Legend of Good Women, he wrote upon uh, Legend of Good Women also. Now, his most important, uh, uh, we can say, literature or his most important uh, uh, genre uh, is or we can say his most important writing is uh, Canterbury, uh, Canterbury Tales and this thing when he uh, started to write down Canterbury Tales is uh, when uh, when people like there, there were pilgrims who started to uh, 
uh, migrate or who started uh, their pilgrimage from St. Thomas Becket uh, to uh, uh, Canterbury. Okay, so here he, he told some uh, 24 stories. He only he was only able to complete 24 stories. And what has happened is he uh, was about to these people when they were going from uh, one uh, we can say St. Thomas Becket shrine to the uh, Canterbury. Uh, and uh, these people were in, uh, there were some uh, roughly around 30 people, but only 24 stories are recorded. And there were every, each and every kind of profession people were there in this uh, pilgrim or in this pilgrimage, as well as Geoffrey Chaucer himself was there in this uh, pilgrimage, wherein his uh, four stories are recorded. So, uh, apart from this, what has happened is in the age of uh, uh, Chaucer, that is 1300 to 1400, there was a great famine which occurred during 1315. I am just talking about the background of uh, literature that is during the age of uh, Geoffrey Chaucer. There was great famine which occurred during 1315 to 1317 and uh, after that what has happened is Black Death arrived around uh, 1348. Uh, it ended to, till 1350s or so on. So because of this, that is famine and uh, black death and then peasants revolt. I will uh, discuss in detail about peasants revolt. But black death and famine, because of this, what has happened is half of the population of England was swiped away because of bubonic plague, which uh, caused due to the Yestina uh, uh, plague or we can say Yestina kind of infection, which was caused due to the rats. Okay, now here how this uh, how this bubonic plague arrived into England uh, due to the arrival of uh, ships which were uh, coming from uh, the part of Europe to England and uh, the, there was a sailor who arrived to England and he was infected due to the rat and uh, uh, because he was infected he he. Uh, he came to England and he entered uh, the part of uh, southern part of England, which is in located in the Kent. Okay, so because of this one single person, the plague was transmitted to uh, several number of people. That is, half of the population of England was swiped away due to this bubonic plague, which was a disastrous thing. And because of this, what has happened is uh, there were uh, no laborers, and because of this, the economy uh, swiped away or the economy fell down. And after that, uh, we can say once again this plague, once again it came around 1665 uh, to 1666. It is, uh, it is the era during, we can say it is later era. But I am talking that why this plagues used to occur because of, we can say, some kind of infection as right now we all are, are also facing the uh, COVID pandemic, which has also caused due to some kind of, uh, we can say, uh, infection and the people are right now suffering from that similarly in that era uh, people suffered due to the rat and uh, that bubonic plague now coming to the uh, second most or uh, say third most important point due to uh, the we can say the uh, laborers who were not getting uh, proper wages now these laborers what they did they revolted against their uh, against the uh, people who were in power and what Tyler, he is the person, he is the rebellion or he is the great person who revolted in 1381 and uh, here what happens is in 1381 the peasants they revolt against the king, uh, kings who were in power and they ask for the money for they were working against because they were very uh, low uh, paid or we can say they were not given the amount of money for which they were working. So you all can just imagine how those people were working continuously for the betterment of the country on one side and on the other side people were dying or before that uh, before some years uh, people were dying due to the bubonic plague. Now coming to the uh, coming to the personal life or uh, we can say to the uh, especially talking about Geoffrey Chaucer. He was uh, born in a very wealthy family. His parents were rich and uh, they had a, a profession of uh, wine making and uh, we can say selling those wine. Uh, winters they were especially known as. And uh, here because he was uh, a very uh, wealthy, uh, born in a very well-to-do family or a wealthy family, he was uh, at the age of 17, he got a chance to work under the king in the parliament also and because of this he was sent on the diplomatic missions where he met as i have earlier told you in this previous in this video 
that uh, he met Boccaccio and Petrarch and uh, now when he starts writing down literature or when he starts writing down poems his poems were written in a series of languages that is he wrote in Italian then French and then English so he wrote in Italian because he met uh, I told you Petrarch Francisco Petrarch and Boccaccio or he came and uh, he came across some other acquaintances also during this era and because of these he his major influence or he was influenced or uh, due to the this languages that is Italian French and uh, uh, English now uh, why he wrote in Fra uh, French language because when he was traveling or when he was in a in a diplomatic on a diplomatic uh, diplomatic mission to France he was uh, at at in France he was uh, uh, he was kept as a prison and uh, this John of Gaunt he uh, set him free uh, he set him Geoffrey Chaucer was set free by the John of Gaunt and uh, uh, due to the we can say uh, his uh, uh, his links to the king he was uh, he was freed or he was uh, set free by giving the ransom of some uh, 16 pounds now 16 pounds is a very huge sum of uh, money in that time where which we are talking that is 13th century uh, roughly around 14th century and uh, with one pound uh, we can say uh, people were people can buy uh, six months uh, uh, we can say six months uh, food or uh, wine so you can just imagine how much money the king has uh, uh, given to the French people where uh, Geoffrey Chaucer was kept as a prisoner so this was the kind of personality and this was the kind of uh, person Geoffrey Chaucer was now I would be uh, giving you in detail about a uh, few five important points the first and the foremost is transition then uh, black death I will also tell a little bit about black death death and uh, social unrest and uh, so on so uh, the first and the foremost point is uh, the uh, era of transition now what happens in era of transition is uh, when this uh, era of transition comes there is a social religious and political changes wherein the spirit and ro of, of romantic idealism was at its climax and uh, we can see the change from medieval to the modern was slow but it was un, uh, imperceptible and England was characteristically medieval and uh, strange amalgam of love war and religion uh, reached perhaps its fullest development at this uh, time and uh, nationalism uh, now talking about uh, nationalism here uh, the age was also remarkable for its growth of national spirit because as you all have uh, seen that there is a hundred years war as well as there is a war between uh, uh, war of roses which was fought between the house of uh, Lancaster and house of York wherein uh, house of York won the battle okay and uh, uh, here what has happened is uh, we can also witness the changes in the language also wherein uh, the English language was used in the previous uh, uh, previous years was uh, changed into the middle English and uh, influence of the church was also uh, we can see and political intellectual and spiritual influence has been diminished due to the reign of John and uh, legislation uh, of uh, we can say national uh, consciousness and uh, after that uh, there was also corruption in the church and uh, reformation which was seen and uh, during this period that is John Wycliffe has uh, uh, we can say has uh, uh, translated John Wycliffe is a very important person uh, in the we can say um, writing the Bible or translating the Bible from Hebrew to English and uh, finally uh, we can say uh, the dawn of new learning now uh, dawn of new learning it is said because this is the uh, now why it is called as the dawn of uh, new learning because now this period is called as the new era or new learning because it is the similar period where people have witnessed the renaissance and reformation and uh, humanism also so here uh, so many things which go hand in hand first of all uh, you all have witnessed that there was a black death uh, then there was a bubonic uh, plague which was caused and uh, then there were peasants revolt and uh, not only peasants revolt but there were uh, great famines which uh, you all have uh, witnessed in this uh, lecture so uh, roughly these were the things which has happened in the uh, age of Chaucer 
I hope you all have uh, uh, you all have understood what I was trying to uh, uh, convey through this video. Uh, uh, with this, I conclude this video, and uh, I hope uh, you will share this video as much as possible. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and uh, don't forget to push the notification bell icon to get my uh, upcoming videos. Thank you so much.